like to introduce our chief guest for the event, Mr. Mathli Sharan Gupta, National President, Crime Free Branch Mission, and former DGP Madhya Pradesh. Sir is an IPS officer of the 1984 batch of Madhya Pradesh Kaduk. Sir is currently appointed as Special DG Police Reform, Madhya Pradesh. He is an MTech in Industrial Engineering from IIT Delhi and is skilled in Operations Management, Analytical Skills, and Team Building. Sir has a special interest in automation and innovation, which is clearly reflected in the current projects he's heading. He is currently heading automated investigation support system with the use of 21 technologies to pave way to crime-free India, empowering railway passengers through integrated All India, GRB Health App Suit, State Disaster Command, Response and Monitoring System to create disaster-capable and resilient India using predictive, proactive warning system, mobilizing of local resources. Shifting population under risk to safer location using period for infotainment and capacity building, automated data, information, and documents requisitioning and assimilation systems are a few to mention. It's an honor, sir, to have you today with us. I would like to request Matthew, sir, to please address the audience. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for uh, such a uh, elaborate introduction. And uh, I feel probably uh, I, I would like to thank Galgothia University for uh, having invited me to join this important uh, forum and to I mean participate in this Agora, uh, which is uh, basically very close to my heart of crime-free Bharat. Uh, to begin with, uh, uh, Honorable Professor Dr. Preeti Bajaj, Vice Chancellor of Galgothia University, uh, Dr. Bentes. So thank you very much for uh, having invited for this session. Probably I am having a lot many things to say with all you, and probably that might set a uh, tone for how the forensics should uh, move forward. Because I find a lot of problems, and uh, with my vast experience of the policing, including six, six and a half years as a DGP, uh, probably in the different uh, domain as a DG uh, Railway, uh, Madhya Pradesh, DG Hongars, Civil Defense and uh, Disaster Management, and DG Police Reform. Uh, first of all, uh, we would not be uh, doing a right kind of analysis unless we are uh, aware of what kind of the problem is being faced on ground by the forensic scientists by the people at large, by the investigator, and uh, including their emotional and uh, related things. So uh, things have to be understood in a totality, and we have to really devise solution to make it happen. Because whatever we are taking it from outside India, from abroad, their problem is very minuscule if we compare them with Indian problems. So their solution is almost fellower in India. Their machinery, which is capable of doing some test, few tests, that is also not really good enough to resolve our problem. So we have to really go in a very big way to remodel our research development, remodel our way of reaction. We have to devise our own way, our own model, our own methodology. I am of the very considered view, the present way of handling crime, present way of providing forensic assistance is there's a lot of gaps and uh, whatever we are doing a little bit here and there, that is not going to solve our problem. So uh, the first problem which has been brought to my notice by forensic students, when they said that uh, uh, though there are 82, uh, more than 82 universities are there, and institutes are there who are offering a specialized subject, a specialized topics on forensic science. But recruitment rule of FSL and uh, senior scientific officer and scientific officer, it is basically not revised. So still they are taking people from basic science. It is something like, do we are having that expert MDs and DMs? Still, we are going for MBBS, 
because the recruitment rule provides for the MBBS. It's something like that. So the first and foremost, this, then it was uh, really brought to the notice of the concerned quarter. A formal letter of has gone from uh, MHA and uh, various states, uh, they are in the process of revising their recruitment rule. I am very sure in times to come within few months, uh, the recruitment rule would be revised across the India and the forensic scientists, they will be having better opportunity to deliver things. But I am having something else to really offer because I feel uh, there is a not really a question of uh, going for forensic scientists uh, on the government approved list. Rather, I would like to have the thousands and lakhs of forensic scientists, senior experts who should act as a freelance. And the thing should be now more system oriented, more procedure oriented rather than by the whimsical approach adopted by anybody. I mean, whether it is IO, IO or the senior functionary of the police department. So many states are not having fully developed organizational structure to provide field support in, uh, to the IOs. However, Madhya Pradesh is lucky because it is having a fully elaborate uh, system. Uh, it is having uh, all uh, branches of FSL. Uh, it has it is having the specialization also. We are having DNA laboratories. We are having the regional DNA laboratories also. And uh, all districts, they are having uh, mobile forensic unit. They are having SSO and SO also. But uh, this is the positive side of the story. I will come and I will tell about the negative side of the story as well. Uh, the biggest problem with the forensic scientists, they themselves are nearly not Johanna, excelling themselves. So they are not enjoying kind of high self-esteem, uh, kind of high confidence level. Uh, and uh, they are generally browbeaten by the people in police hierarchy, including investigating officers. That is not really the right interaction, right uh, correlation with the forensic scientist. Uh, there's a lack of faith and a lack of support from senior police functionaries. Forensic scientists are being viewed by many police officers as they are interfering with their discretion. And basically their latitude and their freedom to implicate or absolve somebody under dictate of someone is getting minimized. And somewhere the rent seeking behavior is also getting affected. So many of IOs, they are not really very kind to forensic supports, which is very readily available to them. And they try to avoid, avoid taking help from scientists unless the direction is being issued by the senior police officer or, or if the FC, SP or DIG or IG, they are very proactive and they are highly inclined in favor of the forensic science related and based in investigation. Uh, there is a lack of professionalism. Samples are not being collected properly. Circumstantial evidences which are required to cross verify. Say if you see any, say law, law less uh, compare, forensic science like a pathological laboratories. So pathological laboratory after doing the test, they will invariably will put a line. It may be, uh, please be verified with the clinical observations. So it means it is having the two aspect. Number one, what the laboratories, what are the tests are saying and what are the corroboratory evidence from the grounds are available. Unfortunately, uh, those corroboratory circumstantial evidences, evidences from the grounds, they have are not properly collected. There's a lack of protocols. They are a lack of standard operating process. People are just uh, going in many cases by their uh, wisdom, by their uh, experiences, but less of the things are being codified. Rather, it is a highly specialized subject. And this kind of uh, lack of standardization cannot and should not be tolerated.
Uh, as I said in the beginning, that majority of the machines, whether it's a DNA or others, they are being imported. They are very costly. They are having very limited uh, capacity and their results have not been really verified in Indian context. So we need to have our own research and development. We have to really do the lot of reprocess re-engineering. And this kind of the limited testing has to be converted into the mass testing. And a lot many concepts which I will be elaborating later on need to be incorporated. Oh, there are other issues. So uh, not collecting sample properly, missing out lot many things. Uh, my friend, uh, uh, he has gone in great detail and giving the details, the five principle. But those principles uh, and evidences are not meticulously collected by, by the investigator. And uh, so because of that very reason, uh, uh, there's a, there's a, there's an issue. Uh, the police not properly collecting it, not properly sealing it, taking it to the Thana. It is lying in Thana for a very long time. Whenever there's a supervisory reminder, then it is sent to FSL or testing laboratories, where in 80 to 90% cases, it is declared that it is not fit for testing. That kind of the situation would not happen if we directly from a spot, it should be sent to the FSL level. So if we are having subsidiary services, may not be necessarily coming from uh, SSO or SO. They may come from the private sector. They may come through the startup and there will be strong performance appraisal and grading system. Probably that will create more jobs, that will create uh, more expertise, that will create uh, and at the same time, it will not allow the deviation because each and every case will be, uh, there will be performance evaluation, there will be grading, and then there will be a, a CGPS kind of things where the integrated pro, uh, proficiency or efficiency index would be calculated. And uh, the payment or revenue line will be somewhere would be calculated based on the performance index. So there will be a pressure to maintain the right kind of the protocols, right kind of the processes, right kind of uh, their own standard. And there will be a lot of research oriented work, which is at the moment is uh, leaking. So uh, like I thought we have uh, say in crime free Bharat, we have created one law institute, I mean draft institute, which says national authority for scientific and technical assistance in investigation and detection of crime. And it's a, the basic purpose is to provide scientific and technical assistance to the investigator. And it is a part of legal and constitutional responsibility of the central government. And whatever is the constitutional responsibility, it cannot be discretion of anybody else. So, and at the same time, now there's a concern about the privacy so this one of the important purpose of this national authority to really guarantee right to the privacy. So right to privacy, which should not be for the authority. It should be in position to capture each and everything which is required for the detection and for the prevention and finally for the rehabilitation of criminals. I will say this authority should be, should be creating a technological chitrugu. I hope, I hope my friends, they understand Chitragupta, mythological Chitragupta. So when we die, Chitragupta during the period, he keeps uh, details and videos of all whatever you are doing. And after your death, when you reach, oh, reach. Uh, so there's a, some kind of a court system where the Chitragupta will be uh, sharing your videos with you. And then you will be given an opportunity to react and thereafter it will be decided what should be your fate and whether you will be getting the next worth or not. I mean, that kind of the uh, mythological belief that there is something like a Chitragut. Now we need to create this technological Chitragut. Who would be having every minutest details about everyone for each soul. But the detail will not be and will not be available to any third party. Only there's a deviation, it can be used in court of law 
for proving your guilt or innocence. So, we must not use the privacy to weaken our system. Privacy should be used for guaranteeing, and privacy should be uh, it should be available to the people so that it should not be shared for any commercial purpose. It should not be shared with any third party. Rather, sharing with anybody who is not supposed to have that information, it would be a very, very heinous offense. It will be a cognizable offense. It will be non-valuable offense with very, very difficult bail provisions. And it would be having minimum punishment of seven years. So the chairman of National Authority for Scientific and Technical Assistance, if he deviate and use any piece of information for the unintended purpose, the same person, chairman would be landing himself in the jail because he violated privacy. That kind of the law we are talking. Now, there's a, when there's a digital data, there will be intruders, there are ethical hackers, there are this and that. So there is a, a powerful system which is catering for the physical security and that is catering for the digital security, firewalls, encryption, this, that. Crossing that firewall and reaching to the database of the crime-free Bharat under National Authority of Scientific and Technical Assistance under NT65C, Schedule 7 of the Constitution would not be doable by any hacker unless he risk his life in the jail. So there will be inbuilt log analysis. The moment any ethical hacker even attempt to enter into the system, his identity would be identified. The evidence of his uh, entering into the system would also be identified. And this will be a very, very serious offense as we are talking of uh, that any uh, uh, insider, if he's sharing that info, uh, information. So any outsider, whether he's an ethical author or unethical author or he's a criminal or he's a non-criminal, does not matter. You are not supposed to enter inside the database of the CMB. And if you do that, you are committing a very, very serious offense. That will be, again, uh, a cognizable offense, non available offense, very, very difficult bail provision with minimum punishment of seven years. And the system at the back end is capable of capturing the locks, capturing your identity, capturing the evidence of your unethical behavior and fixing you and putting you in the jail. So no hacker, irrespective of any part of the globe, would not be in position to do it. Forget about the Bitcoin, forget about the dark net, forget about the dark web. We have to speak and we have to devise solutions with that kind of the confidence. I think we technocrat, we the forensic scientists, we the uh, engineers, we are not devising right kind of the software and hardware solution. We should not become part of the problem. We should become part of the solution. My friend is doable. Uh, so uh, there is a need to uh, really do a lot of re-engineering. We have to really think of how the forensic science can play a dominant role and all investigations should be forensic science based and supported solutions. How, 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 how that can be done? How that can be done? So uh, that, that can be done by modifying our responses and our behavior our protocols and say when an operation can be done by remotely making use of the robotics and other tools by, by a doctor sitting at a remote corner, maybe in the other part of the world or under his guidance may be done by some local doctor. I think it is certainly there's a le with the lesser risk it can be done in the field of the forensic science. So there could be forensic scientists, there could be the field scientist of the forensic, there could be the freelance uh, scientist, there could be the vehicle, let it not be owned by the police department. 
so there could be one startup who will provide services of a very very standard mobile field unit it will be having all kind of the facility all kind of the tools which are required for modern scientific investigation it will have all kind of the packaging system all kind of the resources where a, a very advanced packaging is possible it will be having qr based uh, three package based system where the samples will be collected and will be sent directly from there making use of the courier system not depending on the police so that samples collected from the scene will not be sent to thana it will straight away will go to testing laboratories and there will be plethora of the uh, laboratories we can develop the credential modality for them we could develop their uh, performance and gradings and probably uh, there will be lot of transparency on the other side i will i will cover that in details while deliberating on that issue uh so begin with uh, 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 let me say that uh, the whole thing has to be really converted into say forensic science related evidence collection should start much before real collection of evidence so we should go first uh, state or uh, first step should be to protect scene of crime so even we can have the people after the little training that n number of the volunteer of the cfb which we 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 see in future because it is having the five revenue streams so we see the whole population will be our volunteers so the eligible people could be trained hence the availability of the people uh, who could who will be the trained volunteers to do the say crime scene protection they will be having and uh, uh, they can go and they can do that protection and uh, everything would be under the record and uh, they will get uh, the detail for their services there could be another service photography service it will be having the 2d photography it will be having 3d photography it will be having ir supported photography uv supported photography it will be having the drone photography it will be having robot photography so we we are in position to create a kind of a situation which generally happens in uh, cricket stadium where n number of the chaotic kind of rec uh, recording is uh, through the floating camera fixed camera drone camera all all those cameras they those services would be available and through wifi connectivity through that uh, this data will directly go to the cloud and this data will not be jo hai na available to the person who is providing the service so he will his job would be only to provide quality service he will not have the ownership on the data and his uh, doing the performance would also be evaluated and the payment will be made to them on the basis of the index performance index multiplied by whatever the fees fixed for them so if they are having performance performance index 0.7 and suppose they are supposed to get say uh, 5000 rupees for that service so instead of 5000 it will be multiplied by index 0.7 and he will be getting only 3 Thousand and five hundred rupees instead of five thousand rupees. So those startup, those service provider, they will be always worried to maintain a high, very high level of standard, and uh, we will not be dependent on the permanent bureaucrats. Whether they are, they may be from the forensic experts, the moment they become permanent bureaucrats, their behavior changes. They are having a lot of ego. So why why we should have them on the permanent role? They should provide the services. there is a no go to provide those services in a less transparent manner so so we can have that transparency we can have date and time and location stamping there will be hasvelly protection evidence is captured would be jana sent through the black blockchain technology and it would be creating proof of chain of custody it will be creating certificate under 65b of evidence act it will be you know, creating certificate of admissibility as per the law so that any wrong impression should not be and need not be and could not be created in the court of law now 
there has to be that kind of the mindset so uh, let's presume a situation how i visualize that uh, future of the science uh, uh, forensic science will take place so at the moment i will uh, i will go on the latter part that how the forensics should redesign and do the things and what kind of, now let me look into the administrative part of it delivery part of it and let's change the very gamut of it and and it is doable so uh, i very fondly and i always say that each citizen of india is a police officer in legal term i would like to repeat at this forum also that you are having a legal responsibility not only about the reporting of a cognizable offense but in some some cases even intention to commit crime need to be reported under section 39 crpc uh, you are learned person i would like that you uh, rather than relying on my words i would like you to google it and read for yourself do you know what this law says so you are duty bound to or legal duty bound to report about the commission of offense and even in some certain cases even intention to commit crime and the jurisprudence has been changed for this particular section so when you commit any other crime in that crime the burden of proving beyond reasonable doubt that is on the police and prosecution but in case of the section 39 the burden of proving innocence for not doing the lawful legally duty that proving of innocence lies on the citizen themselves that is the law now let's go to the another most important part of a uh, uh, police that is the arresting criminals so my friend each citizen of india rather each private person is having legal right to arrest a person in a cognizable offense non available offense this right is there even in presence of police so even if the police is present over there still the private person can arrest person and if the police officer is available over there, uh, over there then that arrested criminal arrested offender he need to be handed over to that police officer who is present on the spot and if no police officer is present on the spot then he has to be taken to the nearest police station and in both the cases whether it is the police officer or when you reached at the police station then in both the cases the it is not the arrest but the police will be doing the re arrest so instead of arrest memo there should be re arrest memo now these nuances unfortunately has not been conveyed to the people i i am really failing to understand after uh, more than 36 year of the service why why you are not these things are not really known to public there are very learned people many of you may not be knowing these provisions and when they are such a powerful provision where the burden of proving innocence for not doing the lawful duty also lies on the person why this has not been exploited by the police i very strongly feel this has not been done purposefully so that they can avoid the registration of crime so the police is having the legal duty to whenever any case is reported to them to register the case under section 1541 of crpc so you are having the legal duty police is having the legal duty the pleasure doctrine cannot and should not be there at all my friends i feel you must be knowing that there is a one case called lalita kumari versus state of vp in which uh, apex court has given five six sequel uh, judgment and some total of that judgment is that if content of your reports is revealing that cognizable offense has been committed then police is having no discretion but to register your offense in certain cases when there is some confusion whether the cognizable offense has been committed or not police may inquire 
police will not investigate police can inquire and should inquire within the time frame fixed by the apex court that whether the cognizable offense had been committed or not and the moment on that inquiry it comes to the conclusion that cognizable offense has taken place police is having no discretion but to arrest the case it is highly jo hai disgusting that still getting fir registered by a private person by a normal citizen by a ordinary citizen is getting day by day very difficult this is uh, must be experience of the people at large if it had been a say interactive session probably many hand would have been raised and probably people would have been having the lot many their own stories and the stories of dikkat and kin to say where they try their level best they have uh, they run from pillar to post but still they could not get their fir registered we are operating in that kind of the scenario somewhere the political interference is there the police which is supposed to register the offense the people are entering into the thana beating the police and the cases are being registered against the police that kind of the big plus we are having that kind of the political interference we are having a time has come less established established rule of law and forensic scientists must play a very dominant role and i am of the strong belief of 90 or more than 99% of them they should not be on the payroll of the government so in beginning i said the rules should be revised so forensic scientists should be uh the eligibility conditions should be changed so instead of basic science the experts for the various kind of the things should be uh, taken and rule uh, rr rules should be uh, or recruitment rules should be accordingly revised and which are already in process and i i presume that this will be done on the priority basis i am very sure that uh, all state they will be having the field support system to to do that job at the same time i feel that future india should not be dependent on the government employee this 99% of them they should be freelance journals and there should be transparency in their process everything would be captured digitally now even the comparison where you are using your eyes when where where you are using you are using your brain even that could be captured and wherever uh, we need we can refer it to the person who is more experienced rather we can devise the protocol where it may be mandatory that whatever has been captured it will be sent to three uh, senior uh, scientist also as uh, who may be freelance and they may be sitting in any part of the globe and their view would be and their things would be taken on the almost on real time basis that will be absolutely un unflushed and the whole process will be acting almost on the real time basis and its admissibility its credibility would be very very high it will be almost infallible offense and uh, infallible evidence and with that kind of the evidence we would be in position to convict everybody so we would be in position to detect 100% cases we would be in position to convict almost 100% cases rather i will say more than 100% cases so you will be surprised some how it is possible that more than 100% cases would be registered so let me tell you i have devised many of the methodology where why we, we will be in position to map the movements and map with the crime committed and we are in position to identify the cases which has been committed either not reported because they were found trivial or not registered by the police driven by the various consideration even those offenses would be detected system would be helping to get your fir registered system would be helping to get all kind of the evidences collected including the forensic evidences it will have all kind of the validation from the research people from the higher level of the people and they could be uh, helped uh, so that through the app and through the various tools and through the various iot devices so if they are doing something outside even 
there the device could be connected to that uh, equipment and uh, I, uh, it will be talking to our app. So their output, what they are seeing, what they are observing, what their eyes is seeing, that can also be captured and that will go in database. That could be used for the research. Probably, uh, I am not finding a number of the people thinking on those lines. That is, that is really very unfortunate. So, a lot many things are missed. Lot, lot many things are not captured by the investigator because of the he is not having the right kind of skill set. He is not having the right kind of the tool to connect. So, basically, there is a need of having a say photography service. So, first we said there will be a vehicle, and let the vehicle should not be owned by the government. The vehicle we should have the prescription. What kind of the field forensic vehicle should be, and there will be forensic vehicle service provider and he will be getting the remuneration on the basis of the type of the service they are providing and uh, since they are the expert of the field uh, the obsolescence in technology will not be taking place and they, it will be the duty on them to really upgrade their vehicle operate provide all kind of the facility to the vehicle then, then we said there will be two kind of the forensic experts one expert who is employed by the government and 99% will be the freelance experts of the varying degree of the experiences and they will be having their own grading and proficiency index and their services will be procured but in the two way number one by integrating them right in the field in the investigative process and second when the person who may be available on the scene he may not be of the very high level. So whatever he is capturing, he can capture in the guidance of the senior person may be sitting in an, an, any part of the globe. And that capturing will be made available almost to him on the real time basis. The way we are going for the 5G technology, the way we are going for the fiber optics, doing that will become highly doable and present handicap which is being experienced that will not be there on the ground. Here, I would like to stress on photography. So, there will be photography service. Again, it will be in the private hand. Because if it is in the government hand, they might keep it in their malkhana. And probably, IO may not have the interest, access or skill set to use it in the ground. And if, if it is taken to the ground, probably it may not be functional. So why it should be done by a government employee? Let the service should come. It will capture and it should have the state of art service, which will be having the drone based service, which will be having the robotic service, which will be having the manual service. It will be capturing 2D, it will be capturing 3D, it will be IR supported photography, UV supported photography. It will be converting the whole scene of crime into the grids and the nothing could be missed from the digital eye. The digital eye would be in position to identify object wherever it is unable, it will push that image to the expert and the expert would be in position to uh, do that. After wearing appropriate uh, gloves, that device can be given to some robot or something like that where very intricate pictures could be created, could be captured. You must have heard that uh, nowadays everybody is want to give you a realistic feel. Even now a lot many animated and other kind of the experiences are available uh, with the vendors and commercial people are you implying that if a sari hai to kaisi lagegi ye, padana hai to kaisa lagega ye, right? So they are using the manipulation and there are a lot, lot many uh, say human body uh, replication, uh, maybe real or maybe uh, digitally created. Those things need to be here. So, there could be a manipulation and uh, if we are having any clothes of uh, any, any victim, that will go, go on the manipulation so that we can have the very minute observation. We can even recreate the scene of crime. So, we, we can see that whether it is a real and original or it has been uh, put, on the, put on it. So, uh, 
uh, say if there's a when any flu, whether it is salivation or whether it's a blood or whether it's a semen or whatever, it can it it is not only capturing the substance, it will capture this pattern, it will capture trickling down effect. And whether it corroborates with the thesis which is available or hypothesis which is available on the scene of crime. And we can have the reconstruction of scene of crime. My friend, we cannot do it as a part. Let's come out with a holistic solution to, 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 to make it happen. And uh, I am very sure, sure that uh, the Galgatia University has taken the step in very right direction where this kind of the thinking should be there. We must not go for a very kind of a passive kind of the presentation where uh, uninteresting things are being discussed. I think we should be bold enough to discuss the ground related problem. We should have this national authority for scientific and technical assistance should provide the data set for the research. If we do not want to say or the privacy issue, this we can suitably camouflage the data. So data originality will be there, but the data is coming from where and whose identity that can be camouflaged and that pure data could be made available to the to the, our technocrats, to our scientists. And we can uh, use the various models which are available uh, of the artificial intelligence, of the machine learning and the deep learning. Probably we would be in position to draw inferences which human eye cannot draw, number one. Number two, wherever the human eye is, superior and doing better job, let the technology will push that data to them and get their uh, integration, get their input, so that we are benefited by the technology, we are benefited by the human intelligence also, and both best of both in an integrated format should be available for uh, society, for nation, and for the globe. Let me tell you, there cannot be a better hub for research and development than India. Whether we are talking of capturing CCTV, whether we are talking of investigation of the crime, whether we are talking of the culture, whether we are, whatever we are talking, the grand complexity which is being enjoyed by the Indian, whether it is in the form of a nature, whether it is a form of a weather, whether it is form of a, uh, say, variation in uh, herbs or, or crops or that is Nowhere available me, in other, other part of the globe. Sir, sorry so, for the interruption, but sir, we're running. Uh, out no, of time. no, 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 sorry. This is very important for that Agora is being done because I am setting the milestone for you. Please listen it carefully and not only listen it, please do it. Otherwise, this exercise will become academic exercise. I will plead, don't don't try to tie, tie up, uh, say, uninteresting Joanna's presentation. They have been Joanna, given so much of the time. And please allow me to complete because I want to set the tone for this Agora. I want to, then I will tell how I can really facilitate it. So please don't remind me the time frame. I will be taking five minutes more. I think that could be permitted to me because it is very vital for giving the right kind of the spirit to the, our scientists, to our forensic scientists, they should, what kind of the research they should conduct. Uh, so, uh, I think, uh, anyway, I have completed majority of the issues. Uh, let me recapitulate. So, what I am saying, the present way of forensic science and its status has to be transformed. It requires total transformation, not incremental changes. India is the best suited for any kind of the research and development irrespective of its field and more so for the forensic science. The kind of the complexity we are having, kind of the people, kind of the models of Randy, kind of the things that is no available, that is not there in any part of the world. And we have to create a full service. So I would like to again start from there's a need of revision of RRs. There is a need so that the specialist when we are having that uh, MD and DMs, they are so many PhD, even Gilgotha University is having the 40 PhD students. Well, and there are many. So there may be in total almost 1000 students who are doing PhD in the uh, forensic science. 
it is a time that they should occupy important place and whatever they have done that should be used for the betterment of the humanity for the investigation and detection of crime at the same time i would like to say that our forensic scientists they should not always look for employment they must jo hai uh, become the freelance experts and n number of services should be provided because if they have to purchase it there will be problem of the budget there will be problem of this and that the things would not be available so now a system has changed now we, we are in a era when there may be electricity line and electricity may be flowing of any company we are having railway track train may be run by anybody so the same thing there will be n number of the people n number of the service provider whether it is a providing the services of a vehicle whether it is the providing services for uh, uh, photography whether it's providing the services for packaging materials whether it is question of packaging first level second level and third level having the qr code based system where the who is giving what is the status at what point it is given we even we are in position to calculate that courier speed what which vehicle he might have used we can calculate those kind of the things also and there will be a certificate which will be giving a or which will be attaching the proof of chain of custody so that proof of chain of chain of custody would be available with the evidence whether it is demanded by defense lawyer and court of law or not it will be invariably be there sometime defense lawyer use their uh, that gimmick and uh, their uh, auditory power and uh, their their kind of the things where they create a reasonable doubt doubt in the mind of court sometime even court is influenced by the other considerations whatever be the reason the fact that there is a defeat of defeat of the justice so whether it is admissible or not that can be created a certificate giving all logic that why it is admissible and we can help the court to really decide about the admissibility and the arbitrary discretion of the court will also be taken away or uh, now the integration of the people in say or using the expertise in collection of the not only that uh, blood sample this that but minute traces exchange of the locardo principle exchange of the analysis everything should be integrated in the concept and the vision and it should be integrated in the services and specialized services need to be created and the payment will be made on the basis of the services they are providing so it is something like airtel theory airtel you have they 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 do not own the things they own the services and uh, all redundancy all obsolescence that sits on the person who provide the service uh, service provider or service who is providing the services so here also since developments technology and everything is really improving at a phenomenal space why that should sit on the government so we can have only that what kind of the services are required and then we should have a revenue stream or, or payment stream and the system uh, so that what how that uh, payment will be made where the performance index or uh, 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 its grading should always be uh, placed uh, there so any payment so fees multiplied by its performance index or grading so the person who could not maintain their grading either their services will not be requisitioned or they will be paid less so it will be putting a very high degree of pressure on the service providers to maintain the very high standard of uh, services we have to really uh, uh, provide right to privacy raw data must not flow to uh, court uh, to police and a time has come the crime free bharat it is saying about the five certainty certainty of registration of crime certainty of detection so system would be helping them to detect and forensic scientists would be playing a lead role in that and then it is saying certainty of conviction when certainty of conviction we are bringing element of respect to the uh, witnesses the requisitioning would be done uh, or uh, that uh, servicing of the summons and warrant would be done through our system so we would be doing unburdening and distressing of police police need not to be highly skilled because 
the skill and the talents of n number of the people who have, they may be placed at the different places that will be available at the command of the IU. And IU will not have unnecessary discretion because he has to go by the investigation lead and system would be generating investigation lead and raw data will not be even provided to the police. If it is evidence, it will be tagged with the certificates and it will be pushed to the court. And in future, we even intended to resolve 3.5 crore cases which are pending before the court by having out of box thinking. And we dare to say in future, there will be a court trial without visiting court. My friends, we have to work together to make it happen. I am having a roadmap. I am having a vision. I call upon Galgatya University and other university to really work with me. And I'm sure we will make it happen. I wish all the best to my forensic students, forensic experts, and I call upon the faculty to please join this initiative. Jointly, we will make it happen. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. And at the last, I would like to once again thank uh, Professor Vini, uh, her HOD, whole uh, staff of, uh, including uh, uh, Honor, and uh, CEO, Mr. Galgotia, VC, uh, Madam Preeti Bajaj, for having given me the opportunity to really talk on this uh, vital subject. And I really call upon, please don't do the way it is being done. We are having a roadmap, and I assure you, crime-free India, crime-free Bharat is doable. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much, sir, for guiding us. Uh, now I would like to request Dr. Rajiv Kumar to please present the virtual facilitation to our chief guest. Thank you, Puzi. Sir, kindly accept it. Thank you. Thank you, accept it. Thanks a lot.